All right. Yep. That's it. Folks, you never know what you're going to get. Crack open a cold box of wine or pour something cold on ice because it's the Binge Watchers Podcast. So I heard a rumor that almost made my head explode uh, that Tom Cruise was considering making a legend too. It was like the emoji children. If you're out there, you love, well, I don't even think, I don't even think they use emojis anymore. I think like what? have like moved past emojis and now they just make videos. But there's my favorite emoji is the one with the exploding head, you know, like yeah. half his head, the, the little nuclear Mind stack. Down. So, I thought about seven of those in a row because the idea that he's going to go remake or not remake, but have like a sequel to Legend 2, like a la like, you know, Top Gun 2, right? Like he's going to Top Gun the Legend movie. <laughs> I was like so excited. Like I watched Legend probably like, I don't know. So one of my friends thinks I don't have an accurate count of the movies that I've watched because I was like, oh, I've seen Wizard of Oz like 310 times. She's like, well, how do you know it's 310 times? I was like, because when I watch it for 311 times, then I can claim I've seen it 311 times. But Legend, I've probably seen about 27 times. So sometimes for me, it's hard to rewatch these movies because I'm like, to be fair, I should watch the entire movie, formulate some new thoughts. So when I'm <laughs> on a podcast, I have something new to say about a movie I've seen 27 times. Now this makes 28. And you have something new to talk about with Legend 2. So... I yeah, no, well, well, well. So the whole thing is like clearly, I like Legend, and then like the idea of a Legend Two, I'm I'm on board, like more on board for Legend Two than the Top Gun Two. But it's like I kind of like he's in the new business model of like, okay, I'm I'm legendary Tom Cruise now. I've been around the business, and I'm, like I was all like I made even I even made like a short video or reel about this because I was like, I'm like so Tom Cruise out that like I literally, as you know, make jokes constantly about Tom Cruise right. on this show. If I ever meet him, it's going to be awkward at the punch bowl. You know what I'm saying? If we're ever at the same party. <laughs> However, hopefully he really has a sense of humor. I don't think he does. He's very serious. He's like all business, that guy. <laughs> like, anyway, uh, right. I would love a legend too because that would make me love Tom Cruise again and I wouldn't mind having a legend too. Um, and this movie, believe it or not, leaves it open for it. We'll get we'll get to that a little later. Um, what else is going on in, in uh, the world of movies? Let's see. Do you know Furiosa? Do you know the story of um, Mad Max Fury Road? Uh uh. Okay. No, I'm so... not gonna be. I'm gonna be pretty useless for some of these headlines. But <laughs> you're gonna literally wish so, Dave was back. So the la <laughs> the modern Mad. Oh, oh, and I didn't want to oh, wait. I kind of steamrolled your comment at the beginning. Yes, if you want a princess, you deserve to have a princess. Think shit is crazy in the United States right now. If you're listening outside of the United States, laugh or cry along with us, but. It's not a political show, so we'll stick it to the movie conversation. But just know, we are thinking about many things right <laughs> right now that we have to contend with. But, you know, on with the show. We'll keep you entertained. Um, so, the newest, the newest Mad Max is, like, not really about Mad Max. Like, do you know the histories of these, like, uh, Australian movies? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, the original Mad Max was about, like, a cop, like, right at the beginning of, like, when society starts to fall apart. And then Road Warrior 2 is, like, a classic. I mean, they called it Mad Max 2, depending on, like, where it got released, right? So mm -hmm. Road Warrior is uh, Mel Gibson, and he's, like, driving around, and people are fighting in the future for, like, excuse me, gasoline. And then he helps one good colony, like, defend themselves from this bad colony of, like, roving marauders that, like, have crazy punk hairstyles and, like, flaming cars and just a bunch of crazy stuff right so then uh thunderdome is like this one group of people that are so bored in the future they have people fight to the death right so that's the third movie right so then you know what is it now like skip ahead like 30 years they're like oh here's a new mad max it's coming and it's called fury road and like same kind of thing like he gets 
conned into having to do something. He like gets taken prisoner by these mutants, and the leader of the mutants has an enforcer whose name is Furiosa, and that's um, dang it, Charlize Theron. You're right. If I forget a name, Dave's there to go like, oh, you're talking about. I know, right? Yeah. So, well, the so, cast looks incredible for for Mad Max Fury Road. So yeah, yeah, it's that. it's yeah. awesome. So Tom Hardy is the is now playing the modern version. Of, well, I don't know where this falls in line because in I'm way off track for tonight's movie. In Thunderdome, he like ages and gets older, so you see like Mad Max towards the end of his life. So clearly, Fury Road is somewhere in the middle, hmm. right? Different actors. Like what, twenty five years younger than Mel Gibson is, and playing the same character. However, you could almost call Fury Road Furiosa One, and this one that they're making could be Furiosa Part Two because it is really about Charisse's character, Furiosa. It's much less about like, in fact, Mad Max kind of like takes like a like a back seat. Okay. Don't get me wrong, like, um, I like this filmmaker a lot. His first name is George, I think, but he makes. The, incre- the Mad Max movies are all incredible for their own reasons, right? But this one, I wouldn't want people to go into this one thinking they're going to get a Mad Max ride because it's not. It's really like a Furiosa ride. To each their their own. So once you set aside your bias that you want to take a Mad Max ride, you're okay with it. It's a great movie. It's hard to watch the first time around because you're like, Mad Max, Mad Max, Mad Max. You know, you know what I mean? You're going in like, right. I'm going to get the Road Warrior. Let's go. And then, no, you're getting a whole separate side quest. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so yeah, once you can deal with that, then it's cool. But the, it has the best villain of all the Mad Maxes. And Morton Joe is, like, the head of this group of mutants and, you know, controls all the clean water and the food. And is milking women like crazy. This is, again, we could almost spill into a political podcast here, but we won't. He's got, like, a bunch of wives. He oh, wants God. to drink their milk. <laughs> like it's, oh, it's, my God. He's he's milking them like they're cattle. It's really crazy. Here's an interesting thing. We're going to do a run of fantasy movies, and, like, I keep rotating these titles in for, like, this, for the list, and, and, you know, who knows? Like, maybe we have to show Fury Road to to Jordan. I don't know. Let's go. Um, that's what the one headline, that. folks. All, all I really wanted to say was that the villain was going to be in the sequel. That's all I was trying to say. Like a long time to get that out. Um, now the next headline. Do you know? Who, well, Frank Rillo played. Who's he played? Um, there's a time travel movie on Hulu, and I can't think of the name of it. Um, we'll ask Dave next week what the name of this mm-hmm. movie is. Frank Rillo is like caught up in a time travel action movie thing, and he's like an action movie guy. He's like a B, a B player. He played one of the villains in the, um, one of the Captain America movies with the skull crossbones. Yeah, Crossbones the, is the character. Is he the? Oh, oh wait, no, I guess not. I, I guess I was trying to figure out who he was. Frank Rillo. Yeah, you yeah. can probably look up his greatest hits or whatever. <laughs> greatest hits. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you type in time travel action movie with Frank Rillo, it should probably tell you. Oh, um, I mean, he's a snack, so I'm all <laughs> for it. Yeah, he's a whole slice of pizza, folks. So he's. Frank Rillo is in a werewolf movie that's coming out called Year Two, and basically it's an absolutely like bananas movie, but with practical special effects, which we love. We want the werewolves to look great, right? Like yeah. during Werewolf Month, Jordan's like, "These werewolves suck. Bring me good werewolves only." So we're trying to, want, we're trying to. I didn't want Werewolf Month to end. Let's go. We could do round two here. Just Holy crap! That's like a whole other podcast. It's like just werewolf movies. Could last forever. Um, so anyway, he's in this movie where I don't know why lately in this office, I must have allergies to my own office. My nose is starting to run during a podcast, which is awful. And it never used to happen. It must be the curse of this office. I'm really sidetracked. Keep me in line. Okay. So Frank Rill is going to be in a werewolf movie and it's called year two. It's going to have practical effects. The premise is like, they're calling it the purge with werewolves. So a Superman comes back. And there was an appearance of it the year before, and everybody, I guess, in the area got turned into werewolf, except for Frank. And he's there. He's like, oh, shit. In theory, I can imagine him. He's like, I got to deal with all these werewolves. What's going to happen? There's a Spanish movie where the entire village is, they're all werewolves. So it's they're not treading new ground, but it is kind of a cool idea to be like, oh, we're going to get another action werewolf movie where it's like, in my mind, my imagination is the movie starts, and he's like walking through the town, and he's like at the local cafe, 
drinking his espresso, and then everybody around him was turning into fucking werewolves. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so it's like I could, I would, I would take that ride. I read the title wrong, and it was like just a couple episodes back when we were recording how we were mm. just saying how they should like remake movies, but mm-hmm. just with werewolves, like how they were doing yeah. with zombies. Yeah. And, uh, so I read it. I was like, oh wait, they're actually doing that. Like they are just doing the purge, but with werewolves. Yeah. Like how you know Pride, Prejudice and Zombies, you know, because I would watch it. Just turn anything into to a werewolf movie, and I'm game. So, mm. ticket sold, folks. Ticket sold. One ticket. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is one. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight's movie is called Legend. It was made in 1985. Darkness, played by Tim Curry, seeks to create Eternal Night by destroying the last of the unicorns. So Jack, played by Tom Cruise, shows up and his friends will do everything possible to save the world. And Princess Lily, played by Mia Sarah, from the hands of darkness into a world of unicorns. Magic swamps. Well, it says, the synopsis says dwarves. They're all elves. Anyway, uh, magic swamps, dwarves, and no, rainbows. No, they're goblins. Are they No, really the goblins work for the, they work for okay. the other guy. They the, work the, for the bad guy. Okay, yeah. okay. You're right. Um, You're right. These are the buddies that are helping Jack, you know, Wait, solve Jack. all the problems. Right. Came out on April 18th of 1986, directed by Ridley Scott. It's got Tom Cruise, Mia Sarah, Tim Curry, David Bennett, who's the little boy, but I guess like his accent's so thick, that's why he's dubbed. Like, if you notice the guy playing Gump is his character, yeah. they dub him through the whole movie. I thought it was on purpose, but again, no, it's just an accident. Um, Alice Payton, Billy Barty, he's a famous little person actor. He's in a lot of stuff. Uh, Cork. Hubert, I don't know if he's... He's also a little person actor. I don't know if he's in a lot of stuff. Billy Barty's pretty famous. I don't know about Cork. Um, music originally by Jerry Goldsmith. And you'll find that in the European version of the director's cut. But, again, watching this on television as a kid, Tangerine Dream is usually the version that you get, which is the considered the U.S. version slash the TV version. I'll get into this later, but apparently there's like four cuts of the movie. Hmm. Uh Usually Dave is here to deliver dangerous details, but I'll just drop the trivia. I almost pushed it on Jordan, but I was like, no, nah, I won't do that to her. Yeah, I'm <laughs> glad you did. I was like, I came really ill-prepared. but. <laughs> uh, so according to an IMDb blip, Tom Cruise reportedly wasn't happy with the American cut, and he wouldn't talk about this movie for years because of it. So he encouraged fans to go watch the director's cut. It was also rumored that the inspiration for The Legend of Zelda came from this movie. They're unrelated. They just share Jack, who's like a nature-loving kid running around in a green tunic. His outfit's green. And he also, you know, has a relationship with a fairy. (laughs) Or several fairies. We don't know. We don't really know what Jack was doing before he met the princess. He could have been hooking up with a lot of fairies. So maybe, uh, I think her name is Luna or Zuna or something. Una? Una the fairy in this movie Mm -hmm. has the hots for Jack. Like, maybe she knows he's got a rep for, you know... He's a bad boy. Down with the fairies, so she's like, "I'm gonna go hang out with Jack. He's a sh- he's a he's a he's a sure thing." Yeah. Um, because there wasn't any folks back and then. You know, there wasn't any uh, Tinder. What would the app be for fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> what would the app be for fantasy dating? What are they? Oh, uh, I wonder is there is there any like live action role playing slash dating apps? If not, Goldmine. What that is like the best idea ever. That'd be like LARPing. You take LARPing and put it into a date. But getting app, laid. Like, LARPing is actually be... getting laid. That's what it is. That's what it would be. You get your hookups and your LARPing. <laughs> like, like you level up. up. Yeah. That's what it should Ooh. be called. Level up. Level up. Go. I like it. TM trademark, folks. We did it first. We own it. Me and Jordan. You heard it here first. Billion dollars overnight. <laughs> What were you guys doing before this? Making jokes about dating apps on a podcast, and then we actually made the dating app? Bam! Boom, baby. <laughs> Why not? we got to expand our horizons here because the rent is due. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, as I said, the movie notoriously had four cuts and two soundtracks. There's the European and director's cut, the Gary, Sm- the Gary Goldsmith score, and then the TV and theatrical cuts have the boss tracks from a band called Tangerine Dream, this is the only time I think I would support a studio decision over the filmmaker's decision for a soundtrack. They're like, this band is hot. Put them in the movie. All the kids are going to go see Legend. I'd believe it. I love Tangerine Dream. However, 
you don't like getting notes from the studio. And if I made a movie, it, that would suck. It would be like, you're going to put this band in your movie. That's it. And what's worse than that is like, you're not just going to use this band in this the soundtrack. You're going to cast one of the bandmates as a critical role. You know what I mean? Then it gets crazy. You're like, you're like ah, no, that's not going to happen. Um, I have a favorite also, beer. What's that's that? Called, I have a favorite beer that's called Tangerine Cream. And I'm like, I mean, it's mm. maybe a coincidence or maybe they actually named could it. Could be named after the band. Yeah, it could be. You never know. So there you go. Jordan is contributing to the trivia. Yeah, Station 26. Um, it's delicious. Rumors also during production, there were several production issues, including the fact that they had to take a meeting with the studio and the producers and stuff to say, like, oh, we're going to have to give this movie the Disney method and then follow, like, the Disney storytelling, uh, tone it down, PG it, have a happy ending, et cetera, et cetera. Um, supposedly, the story evolved from Ridley Scott telling the screenwriter our basic idea of a Grimm's fairy tale, essentially inspired by, like, the story of a hermit hero or a basic hero gets the magical weapons, and then it's got to go on a go on a quest. And then also handing him a copy of the book Fairies, which I've actually read. It's like, it's basically like a field guide. Like, the book is written as if fairies were real. Hmm. So you read it, and it tells you what to do if you encounter fairies in, like, the wilderness, and Aww. how to stay out of, like, a ring of mushrooms in case it knocks you out and you pass out for 700 years, that kind of thing. You know you know what I mean? Like, right. Um, so, well, yeah. Well, and I love how she was, um, I, I forget the, like, her... Okay, the princess's friend's name. Um, I don't know, but she was kind of shouting those things while she was running into the forest. It was like, stay away from the ring of mushrooms. I just thought that. Yeah, was they cool. were they were dropping the rules from right out of the, the right. real book of fairies. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think she called her Nan, right? I, something like that, or Nell. It's, it's Nell. They didn't, they didn't clearly identify the fact that like. That must be a village that the princess like oversees, and this is one of her serfs. Right. Or, you know what I mean? Like the relationships in the movie are really not well <laughs> not well defined, like, except for the main two. Yeah, glazed right. right over like any backstory whatsoever. It was just like full force right into like what was currently happening. So, and I think the version that I uh, shared with Jordan is like on my Voodoo version. It has the TV like scroll that tries to fill you in like there's a world of light and there's a world of darkness and in between is the blah 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 yep. to try to help you figure it out but it doesn't lay out like what the people are doing or why why exactly no it pretty um, much told you like, what to expect in the movie like it was okay. not like a preface at all yeah 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 it's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it was like a quick summary about what you're gonna watch <laughs> well and you can tell i mean this is my favorite version but you can tell like there are some things like literally chopped out because like like when they encounter the the demons that want to cook everybody in their little pots or whatever, like there's clearly clips missing from that battle sequence. It goes from like, oh my gosh, here's a problem. Oh, now we're fighting these guys who want to cook us to somehow so. Jack overcame both of them and there's all this smoke. But you're like, wait a minute, between swinging the thing for the first time and jumping off the table and then the demons are dead by smoke and f I'm confused. they're in smoke all day because they're in hell. <laughs> like why is, you know, anyway. I'm not going to pull apart the logic because I think I made it clear in the beginning that I like the movie. But right. um, hold on. Dang it. Okay, I'm back. All right. Um, supposedly, like the, fl the flirtation between darkness and the princess was supposed to be like way more intense. Mm -hmm. There's a rumor that there's a version of the script where they were talking about taking it even further, and there's like a almost bestial sex scene between. Um, Darkness, darkness and the princess which that would definitely make the movie rated r for sure right. and uh who alluded to this was the screen rent movie website so don't blame me this i read it there they're suggesting that it exists i don't know i haven't heard this but you know i find it i don't know <laughs> would it improve the movie i don't know it would make her dark turn make more sense although i do like the the dress that like um tempted her and then she, she turned into like Lady Darkness for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, so or whatever it was. No, completely agree. I, I mean, that was kind of like, I, I really liked the movie, but that was kind of where I stood. I'm like, if you want something that's like a little bit more adolescent and then, then like, this is great because it's super fantasy, like literally looked like a live action Lisa Frank poster, like mm. the unicorns and the lush little forest and waterfalls and stuff i thought it was like the set design was so sick 
but I was like, okay, if you really like the more rated R fantasy stuff, like this could be a little soft for you. But so uh, Jordan's already given you a preview of our favorite bits, which we're gonna get to. But first, I want to preview this uh, podcast. I'll tell you a little bit about the Starship Leadership Academy. It's an award-winning leadership development podcast told through the lens of Star Trek. Star Trek has great examples of leadership, and Jeff, the host, has, what, 20 years of experience in management in the public and private sectors. I'm going to preview a clip from his podcast. So after listening to ours, go listen to uh, the Star Trek Leadership Academy. Leadership, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starfleet Leadership Academy. It's ongoing mission to develop leaders through Star Trek. To boldly go where no podcast has gone before. A leadership development podcast told through the lens of Star Trek. The Starfleet Leadership Academy. Available everywhere you listen to podcasts. So I think uh, I'll tell you, Dave, you know, just take the rest of the year off. Jordan's got this. Get him real yeah, nervous. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, fire him. Just fake fire him. It will be super fun. Um, fake yeah. fire him from our free podcast organization. <laughs> like, what's the tier? <laughs> Do we have a handbook? Do we send him to HR? <laughs> Dave, get on the phone with my mom. She wants to fire you from our podcast. I was going to say, one of my cats could be the person in HR. Yeah, your cat's got a lot of personality. Let's look. I mean, didn't they, like, make a cat a mayor of a town recently? Could like, be. I would live there. So, so yeah. I so, what's, your cat's name is Frank, right? <laughs> Yes. Frank, the orange cat, yes. Garfield type. I mean, he he would get cast type. Unfortunately, they'd be like, "Yeah, we're looking for a Garfield type." You're like, Frank. <laughs> like anyway, so yeah, Frank is now our HR lead. So yes. we'll, he'll have to deal with all the garbage, any yeah. flack that we take from listeners or whatever. If we get ourselves into lawsuits, like Frank, you got this guy. Just give him like yes. extra cat. In it. Oh, that's what the. Like, hey, Frank, we really need to go this our way, the way of the company and not the way of the individual. So, could like, here's some, just slide them some extra catnip. Like, when you make a decision, Frank. Yeah. Um, oh, good stuff. Tonight's a night of tangents. I don't know what to say. I Favorite bits from the movie Legend. Jordan was about to say I like it, but I cut her off because I just can't shut up. Well, you go know ahead. what? Favorite bits. I completely agree. I love that Lily was like always tempted by sin, right? She's like the one who touches the unicorn. Mm. And then she also gets like when she goes down into, I guess you want to call it like the gates of hell or whatever. I don't know what you really want to call them, where they go to be closer well, to the dark. They described it as being inside of an evil tree, but it's a whole fortress okay. inside of a tree. It obviously bends space and time because literally inside it's just hell. It's literally right. hell. Fire everywhere. Right. People are being tortured. It's bad. It's bad news. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so um, I love that she gets tempted by like the shiny necklace. And that's like how the darkness is seducing her. And then mm. she does this dance with, I don't know if it's like a creature that's faceless wearing this like gorgeous dress, but how she turns into it and she's dancing across, you know, I guess the floor of the, you know, dangerous tree or i don't know <laughs> what to call it but oh well she's like in the throne room where the dude the lord of the darkness room. is about to show up That's... yeah i think the set design was just like so freaking fun for this movie it just was so like very exotic and i'm always a fan when you just feel like you're in a different world so that was definitely one of my favorite bits. I'll also say that Tom Cruise wearing armor, but they don't give him anything for his legs. Like he's just wearing top armor. I don't know yes. why I thought that was funny. So in the wild, he barely had clothes because so clearly he left his village or like as a small child, he got he like Tarzan did or something because I, that's what I was He has say. a tunic, but he's clearly not he's not really taking care of it. It's full of holes. It's a green right. tunic, which just looks like a, a shirt dress. Right. And they, my, they literally just took his leafy green thing and then, like, we have to make an armor version of this. So here's his golden leafy armor tunic. And you're right. But then the file, the style of fighting is ninja. I think they did that because either Tom decided or Ridley decided or somebody else decided that, like, Jack is just going to kick everything because he's almost doing <laughs> martial arts. Yeah, like right? cartwheels and he's stuff. Doing flip, <laughs> yeah, so he's like, I want to be able to move. I got to breathe. You know, I gotta air it out as I as I kick demons in the face. Uh, right. And the Lord of Darkness. Here's the here's the thing that's really screwed up. So they took the time in the beginning to set up the quest. They took the time to go get him magic armor, 
a magic sword and a magic shield. And then sure enough, as soon as we're in the dungeon, we're not using our shield and we're not right. using our sword. We never go back to get them. Like they have like once they get out of the cell, it's like they have full like backstage access to every part of hell. But they never recollect his magic weapons that he then needs to fight the Lord of Darkness, right? right. So here's where you can see the reason why there's four versions of the movie. Here's where if there's any part that it falls apart, it's like right, it's here. It's this part of the movie, right? Right. Uh and then he wants to use sunlight. I mean, because this okay. I sound like I'm griping. I know it's favorite bits, but the Lord of Darkness tells us how to get rid of him. It right. comes up in a just like natural conversation. Yeah. yeah. He lays it out to the princess. Yeah, I don't want to get sunlight on me. I want you to hang out in hell for like a thousand years, but we're never going to the beach because I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jack overhears this and he's like, hmm. All right, so let's get everything that's reflective, but let's not forget that I have a magic shield, which would probably be the most re reflective thing in the down here. No, let's go get every pot and pan that's reflective and, and this elaborate domino effect of, like, let's have it, like, the sunlight trash through the thing. Right. Bing, but, bing, but bing, bing. <laughs> but then, but then, okay. So the world has gone to shit, folks, because he they stole the unicorn's horn. It's frozen and over. They want to keep it. And it's really cool to see the goblins fight over it in the beginning because they were power playing. They're like, well, I got the horn, so Lord of Darkness, you're out. I'm in. That's it. But... The Lord of Darkness does get the horn, and they're trying to get it back to save the unicorn, blah, blah, blah. But then Jack uses it to essentially win the fight, and then the sunlight comes in. So it's almost contrary. It's like, you don't actually need the sunlight because you just stabbed him with the unicorn horn, which is full of sunlight and goodness, and then he's being banished to the shadows. But then the craziest thing happens. He goes, spoiler alert, but he, he yells to heaven to be rescued. He goes... Father, protect me. And that's the bat. That's the Lord of Darkness going. It's the, this is the devil going, help me. Save me. I want salvation. And I'm like, wait a minute. So now, okay. We have an imaginary world full of imaginary creatures. And then we got biblical all of a sudden. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Like, it's not like breaking the fourth wall where the movie knows it's a movie. It's like, who is he? Who is he asking to save him from? Right. We haven't established that this world has gods. <laughs> like, or like, right. or kings or queens or like. So suddenly it's like we find out he's like an intern at the end of the movie. Like he's not really the Lord of Darkness. He's right. just an intern. Like he, he actually like the, the boss is out sick. So he thought he would sit in the boss's chair and doesn't know how to run the computer. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, he does like, do that. And he does like he's also talking to his I don't know if it's like a fireplace or something like asking for advice. Mm. So you're so right. He's like literally just in place. Sort of. Kind of. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. One thing I didn't get is is when the unicorn horn falls into what looks like a lava, lava and then Jack sticks his hand in it. Nope, <laughs> doesn't burn at all. You know why? Pure of heart. <laughs> Hell magma can't burn the pure <laughs> like the pure heart. There are many things unex many, many things unexplained that you just have to get over be okay with to enjoy yeah. the movie. Like you just gotta like let all reason go. And I think they're hoping to establish that again by this girl saying, well, hey, it's light and darkness and magic. Magic is a reason? <laughs> okay. Now that I've I've teased the movie enough, I made fun of it enough. Uh okay. My favorite favorite bit. Yeah, that's I, what I was just about. To yes. Ask. My favorite bit is actually the temptation scene with the dancing with the dress and when the Lord of Darkness walks through the mirror and he's like, You really want to go back to this guy, Jack? I mean, I got everything down here. Um that's like he's one of the best devils on screen I like ever. I uh, agree. So Tim Curry is crushing it in here, and then he actually says a line. I think this is like 10 years before they do the TV version of It, which is the Stephen King story, and he plays Pennywise the Clown. But he says a line like Pennywise in this movie. like He goes to a very dark place, and he's like, Jack, you're just a child. You know, you know what I mean? And you're like, oh, my God, that's really scary. So um, that's it. Like Basically, you have to see the personification of evil in this movie. That's like one of the best reasons to watch it. And also... Like, I love the goblins. 
Like, I like yeah. the other goblin who tried to take the horn, and then we don't see him again. Well, no, actually, we do see him again, because he's really an elf in goblin's arm. It's, you know what? It seems like goblins and elves are actually the same things in this movie, but they right. just pick a different side to work for. Right. Uh, uh, rating it. This will be interesting. Hmm. Okay. I would say a binge later. I loved it. Mm. I loved the set design. Like, definitely would watch it again. But I would have to be in, like, a mood, you know? A mood to, watch, like, sit down and watch a fun fantasy movie. I thought the set set design was so fun. The costumes are crazy cool. Um, but binge, yeah, binge later. What about okay, you? Okay, that makes sense. So if, like, you're in the wrong mood, like, on a Thursday afternoon, you're like, F this movie. Like, it could easily be... Just like whatever, yeah. Like it's okay. Like you know, like um, something else. But like I would totally watch this again. It's literally like considered within like the top five fantasy movies, generally. Uh, and it's in my, it's in my top thirty of greatest movies of all time. So I definitely, it's a binge now. I even though I I have my issues with it. The fact that, but but liking the movie is what's generating the questions, right? Right. So totally. that's also a good indicator. Like if you watch a movie, and it makes you have all these questions, and like so you keep wanting the movie to go into these areas that it can't go into because it's only eighty nine minutes of whatever it is, but you just long for, you wish for these other elements. So when he gets pushed back into the shadows, folks, it looks like he implodes and turns into a, a constellation, right? Like his like body almost- forms into stars. But like, right before like that, they lost in space. Yeah, but there's of. a couple of indicators right before that. That like, oh yeah, there definitely could be like a legend too. Like, you know, what if they screwed something up? And like, clearly he's not the top evil. Like he mentions another entity. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, wait right. a minute. Like, what? What are these layers that we haven't opened yet? So yeah, um, but obviously, I mean, what are they going to do if it's a sequel? Jack's character would be like as old as Tom Cruise, and so did he actually marry the princess, and do they have a kid? Or is... Ooh. Did their actions bring the big evil down, or like... You know, what... I, I mean, I almost want, like, a, a movie just about goblins. What are they doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like uh, what are those guys up to? But, um, there you go, folks. So, we watched Legend. We showed it to Jordan. Uh, did you watch any other classic movies that we need to shame screen you for? Mm, no, not that I can remember. All right. It's so, been a minute. Uh, fan service. I don't know. We'll give some fantasy movies away. We gave some horror movies away and werewolf movies last month. Oh, and then there's a werewolf movie that's on hold because the printing was delayed. It's uh the 4K thing of dog soldiers. Like it's like Ooh. supposed to be out this month or next month, but it's being pushed to the August something. So. Can't help anybody with that 4K yet. Um, let's see. Legends available on Blu-ray. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll give copies of this movie away that we just made fun of. All right. Um, staff picks. If you watch something else beyond the movie of the week that you want to share. I did finish some Peaky Blinders, but that's like pretty much it. Oh, see, that's, and, for, that's uh, for me like... I can't crack that one open. I'll have to ease into that one. I haven't been able to get into it. Like even any of the seasons? Yeah, nothing's intriguing me. I've watched all the trailers and like nothing's really, even uh, mm-hmm. Killian Murphy or whatever, mm-hmm. nothing's really got me in there. Another snack. I did start Spiderhead too, though. Oh, I watched I, that movie. Yeah, I didn't get all the way through yet. It's another one of those things where I have like all right, started let me it. spoil it for you right now. No. Spoil it. Just kidding. What? I think I know what happens. I was like oh. sort of asleep for the rest of the movie where I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. So hmm. what'd you think about it though? If oh, it God, wasn't, if, if, yeah, sorry. Like, like dang, uh, you really didn't Netflix, like it. <laughs> and Netflix hadn't queued up. Hey, we think you might like this. Let's automatically play it. Since you finished this other movie, I would have never have watched any of it. And then <laughs> the part I saw was like, oh, he's about to have, again, I don't know why it's always sexual with me, but he's about to have sex with somebody he doesn't want to because they click this little pill button and like they have these backpacks 
these little things where like they're injecting chemicals or drugs into their spines or whatever. So like, oh yeah, he doesn't want to hook up with the crackhead, but he he doesn't have a choice. And so okay, I watched the movie and fast forward because it's not a very good movie at like at all. So <laughs> it's probably why I've tried three times already. But I watched the last twenty minutes of it at normal speed, and exactly what I thought was going to happen to one of the characters is exactly what happened because this is like a paint by numbers. Like you can. Just because, like, oh, God, I want to talk to you about this, but I don't want to spoil it either. So it's like, darn, oh, darn. spoil it. Just spoil it. You, okay, so I thought the doctor was also on the drug. Guess what? Yeah, Chris Hemsworth, Dr. Thor, he's also yeah. on the drugs. Like, Yeah, I saw that part where he also this... has the pack, and he's been, like, yeah. using it in his free time. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so basically, being on the drugs, too, is, like, his demise. So now it's spoiled. <laughs> Go figure, right? Yeah. Wah, wah. Um, so, oh, uh, fantasy, kind of fantasy. I mean, sci fantasy, if you think comic books are all fantasy or whatever. Umbrella Academy Season 3 dropped on Netflix. I'm so so excited. I binged that. I like that it ties up some loose ends from the other two seasons. And, like, when stuff starts to make sense or you get these answers, you get finally get these answers, you go, oh, that's why that, and that's why that. Then you're like, oh, that's really cool. Like, somebody really thought that out, you know? Um, Heck, yeah. So that's where – and then, then it also – maybe there'll be a Season 4. Even though they wrap things up, like maybe there, but there's still something else that happens that you go, okay, yeah, another season. Um, what else is going on? Oh, well, there's this amazing show, but like the show's getting long. So on Hulu, they dropped eight episodes of a show called The Bear, and it's about brothers that have like an Italian roast beef place, make sandwiches, or like a neighborhood place, mm -hmm. and they're like well established in the neighborhood. However, there's a tragedy, like the older brother who's like the owner and operator, he commits suicide. So the show starts with the younger brother thrown in, literally thrown in to like keep the kitchen running, keep the restaurant running. And then he finds like all the problems his brother was dealing with. But they also have a cousin who works there who was like this, like he's not the owner, but he feels like the owner. Right. So there's this mm -hmm. clash of personalities because the younger brother who takes over and he's one of the actors from. I was going to write his name down because I knew I wasn't going to know it. He's one of the actors from uh, Shameless, the American version that was on um, Showtime or whatever. He's like the middle brother, like the one who has an affair with the college professor. I don't know if you know Shameless, but he's like. Um... So so anyway, the younger brother is clashing with the cousin about how the future of the restaurant is going to go. But the younger brother is like classically trained, like he went to a French cooking academy or whatever. So he wants to run it like this way. And what's cool is, like, this is the first time I think I've ever seen anything, show or movie, where it actually feels like you're really working in a real kitchen. Because I know you were saying, that. like, you were, like, a, a server at a joint, right? I've been, oh like, I've worked in a lot of kitchens. And, yeah. like, the fraternity, like, level of abuse and, like, the hierarchy and the jokes and all the crazy, like, all the stuff that happens, like, on a kitchen line. This show, like, encapsulates, like, that energy or whatever and i'm like right this is like a a really great show like this is one of the shows that i'll be like, i'll be talking about and like um pushing people on like heavily because like it feels real to me but um is it also a comedy? I can relate because it says it's a comedy but it didn't sound funny when hulu it says it's a it. comedy I didn't, there's nothing funny in the in, okay. this, in this show so it's like a serious version of waiting i don't know if maybe... yeah, it's like a dramedy maybe and they have a famous um there's a famous canadian chef who's like a big YouTuber who's actually in the cast as well. It's like a bit part. What What is his name? He's always making crazy chicken sandwiches and like he's a friend. Oh, man. I don't know. Yeah, I should have written I'm down their so, names. I'm so, because I'm looking at the cast right now, but I don't know which one you're, who would be a Canadian chef, but. Like, he's a my, big, he's my... a big guy. Like he's a big guy with a beard. Lots of tattoos. He's Maddie pretty famous. Math Matheson? There you go. Matheson. Maddie Matheson. There you go. Canadian fans, boom, you know who he is. Oh, I'm so excited. I, like, love cooking shows so much just because yeah. I w did was brought up in the industry, like, also working for, like, James Beard. Me, too. Like, that's how you get everything. That's and, how you get your yeah. first – that's how you get your first car. You work a line. You get a car. You get first apartment or, like, you put yourself through college. Like, that's it. In the fire, man. Yeah. I've done everything from, like, James Beard award-winning restaurants to, like, Michelin star – restaurants like top to bottom front to back when it comes to front of the house and so 
like definitely have a passion with food and beverage and I'm super excited to watch this sounds right up my alley and I'm glad you said it's a drama but yeah when I type it into Google it says it's a television comedy weird anyway I think I consider it a drama it's on Hulu they just dropped it I hope it has another season I hope they were just like one and done this mid-season thing and they just dropped it on Hulu uh it's very fascinating I like it a lot I'll talk about it again but um okay. come back next week we'll be talking about another fantasy movie can't say what yet usually I predict uh. it and tell people but However, there's another movie coming out that might disrupt the entire list if it turns out to be a good movie. It's a modern fantasy that's coming out, and I'm not going to say anything. We'll find out next week. Otherwise, we'll be reviewing another action-packed fantasy classic on Binge Watchers Podcast. And um, I was going to say something nice about Dave, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. So, Oh, Dave... If you're listening to this next week, miss you, bud. <laughs> Hope you're traveling safe. All them feels. She's so nice, Dave. Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Not the listeners. Let me clarify. Not anybody enjoying this podcast. Just my co-host that, that isn't here to do his job. <laughs> Let's get Frank in here. Where's the cat? Where's the HR cat? <laughs> You know, maybe I'll call this episode uh, Leaky Faucet. And it could be the sexual innuendo that ran through the whole episode about, like, how the Lord of Darkness was really trying to hit on the princess. Or my nose. My nose is running like freaking crazy. I stopped my camera to blow my nose for, like, two seconds during the outro song, folks. I don't know what's going on. I need to talk to Frank about this, these accommodations. Seriously, put all <laughs> like your complaints allergy in attack or something. Put all your complaints into uh, Frank at podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sponsored tonight by Claritin D, uh, uh, extra strength allergy medication. <laughs> they, you know, that's what's funny is like if you have allergies, like you're trying to be like a badass, but like you're like, like if you had like a full blown sinus infection, your eyes would be like puffy and red. You'd be like, "Don't worry, guys, I'm going on the quest." <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, boy. Quest for Movies continues next week. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.